So hello everyone. In this video, I would like to discuss some very important instruments that would be kept for your A and D exams. And some of these instruments, uh, which I will uh, explain or which I will highlight at last, are important for your theory exams also. For example, uh, diagnostic nasal endoscopy, direct and indirect laryngoscopy. Okay, and the instruments which are used for mastoid surgery. So these are the questions that may be asked for your theory exams. And of course, all instruments are extremely useful for your practical exam as well as for your afternoon viva session. So the first and foremost instrument which is I'm showing here is called as Thudicum nasal specula. See, you can see the picture. It's a very simple instrument. There is no confusion. Okay, Thudicum nasal speculum. It is the only and the most commonly used nasal speculum for your nasal cavity examination. Remember, it is used mainly for anterior rhinoscopy. That means nasal septum, lateral wall of the nose, little area where the Kieselbach's plexus is located and the nasal cavity. It is a self-retaining nasal speculum. How you have to hold the nasal speculum? It is very, very important. See, you have to held this thudicum nasal speculum over the hooked index finger of the non-dominant hand. That means for most of us, we are right-handed. So what is a non-dominant hand? Left hand. And the blades are then close to be present between the middle and ring finger. Okay. So please, that is very, very important. The examiner will ask you how to hold the thudicum nasal speculum. Okay. Once that is done, next is called St. Clair Thompson posterior rhinoscopy mirror. For anterior rhinoscopy, we use thudicum nasal speculum. For posterior rhinoscopy, we use St. Clair Thompson posterior rhinoscopy mirror. See, it has a bionic shaped handle. See, you can see number one bend, then a second bend. Okay, so first bend and second bend. You can see two bends. This is how you have to differentiate this posterior rhinoscopy mirror from indirect laryngoscopy mirror. Okay, I will show what is in where, how the indirect laryngoscopy mirror will looks like. Remember, in posterior rhinoscopy mirror, okay, which is usually done used to do what perform posterior rhinoscopy, you can see two bends. It is called St. Clair Thompson posterior rhinoscopy mirror. See, this is indirect laryngoscopy mirror. Indirect laryngoscopy mirror. Remember, there is no bend. There is no bend in case of indirect laryngoscopy mirror. For what indirect laryngoscopy? In indirect laryngoscopy, what are the structures visible? That is very, very important. What are the structures visible during anterior rhinoscopy is important. Posterior rhinoscopy is important. Indirect laryngoscopy and direct laryngoscopy is extremely important. Okay. For examination of tongue base, valicula, gloso and pharyngoepiglottic folds, the vocal cords, pyriform fossa and the posterior pharyngeal wall. All these are the structures which are usually visualized in indirect laryngoscopy mirror. So what are the structures which are not seen in direct laryngoscopy? Apex of pyriform fossa, under surface of the vocal cord, post cricoid region. Okay, these are some of the structures or the laryngeal surface of epiglottis. These are the structures which are not seen in indirect laryngoscopy. Okay. Uh, yes, this is called as, see, Tilly's andral harpoon. Okay, harpoon. It is made, it's an instrument which is used to make an opening in the medial wall of the maxillary andrum. Okay, maxillary andrum. This is called Tilly's andral harpoon. And remember, it is mainly used for intranasal androstomy or it is um, for in case of what maxillary sinusitis. This is Tilly's andral burr. See, burr you can uh, very easily identify it. You know, the flower shaped thing which is located at the end. This is called burr, okay, which is used to drill, okay, or what to say, which is mainly used to smoothen the margins of the androstoma, okay, fine. Yes, so I'm discussing just the very important instruments, not everything. Mm -hmm. So this is called Higginson's syringe, very commonly kept exam, um, what to say instrument, Higginson's syringe. It is a bulb with a red rubber tubing on the other side. What is it mainly used for? Andral wash or nasal douching in case of atrophic rhinitis, okay? In atrophic rhinitis, you no, know, this caused by Klebsiella or Zena. Okay, uh, what will happen? Uh, there will be crusting, excessive crusting is there. So we used to do nasal douching, we will use Higginson's syringe. Remember Higginson's syringe, okay. Yes, this is Janssen's bone nibbler, okay? That means you used to pick up the bone spicules and fragments, especially during maxillectomy or Caldwell luck operation, okay? You can see, you know, uh, see, this is the end, and in the end, you can see a concavity. There is a depression is there, okay? This depression, this helps to pick up the bone spicules. Yes, these two forceps are extremely important. One is called ash forceps, which is a septal forceps, and next one is called as Walsham forceps, okay? See, um, ash forceps is mainly used to elevate and straighten the nasal septum, whereas Walsham forceps, you know, it is used to refracture and realign the nasal bones, okay? This is the ash, okay? This is the ash 
and a septal forceps and this is the volsham volsham forceps no see see in the ash well um, septal forceps you can see an elevated end followed by a bend and then a what to say a circle okay and this is volsham forceps volsham forceps is straight okay that means when you keep these two instruments one instruments will be above the level of the what to say table and one instruments will be at the line on the level or at the level of the table that is how you have to differentiate ash septal forceps and volsham forceps so why i am saying it is um, ash septal forceps means you remember it is for nasal septum and volsham forceps it is for uh, refraction and realigning the nasal bones okay Yes, this is called Jenkins mastoid gauge. Okay, gauge. You can see, you know, two, what to say, a straight thing. There's a tunnel is there. Am I right? This is mainly, uh, what to say, um, used to remove the heart bone during mastoidectomy and for in case of Caldwell lock operation, the excision of exostosis in, case, in external uh, auditory canal. Okay, that is my exostosis is one of the most common benign tumor which occurs in case of what uh, external auditory canal. So this is Jenkins mastoid gauge. This is a depression. Okay, this is a depression or a canal. Okay, depression or canal very important lempert's mastoid curette okay used to curate the chunks of bone from mastoid during surgeries like tympanoplasty or mastoid exploration or stapedotomy and it is also used to remove granulation tissue okay uh, as well as cholesteotoma see this is like a spoon okay small spoon this is lempert's mastoid curette These are uh, different types of oral speculum, okay, which are final shaped structures you can see, um, but these are not commonly asked. So coming to tuning fork, tuning fork, you know, what is the uh, tuning fork which is we commonly use? It is 512 hertz. Why? Because it is present in the speech frequency range, overtones are minimal, sound is more auditory than tactile in nature and tone decay is optimal. That's 256 and we used for vibration testing. So what are the parts of a tuning fork? Very, very important. Two prongs, okay, it has a shoulder, stem and a base. These are the two prongs, shoulder, stem, base. You should always hold the tuning fork at the stem, not at the base. Yes, this is the meringo tom. See so how the shape looks like? See, this is the meringo tom. It is an instrument used to make an incision on the tympanic membrane for SOM or unresolved acute otitis media. Okay. Yes. See, this is what we call it as otoscope. Okay, this is called as otoscope, handheld battery operated instrument used to visualize the what are the structures which can be visualized by the otoscope? External auditory canal, tympanic membrane, and middle ear. If how when we can see the middle ear, if there is tympanic perforation only, we can visualize the middle ear. Okay. Yes, this is Mollison's self-retaining hemostatic mastoid retractor and we have an another retractor which is called as Jenkins. Um, in that, no, what I told, no, there will be a screw will be present. Okay, screw will be present. I will show the picture later. So this is Mollison's self-retaining hemostatic mastoid retractor used for in the purpose of mastoidectomy or tympanoplasty for uh, as well as for harvesting temporary species. Just remember for mastoid surgery, cortical as well as modified radical uh, um, what mastoidectomy, we will use Mollison's self-retaining hemostatic mastoid retractor. Factor. You have to uh, name the instruments in complete name. Don't write it's a master retractor. It is more less and self retaining hemostatic master retractor. So it becomes self retaining nasal speculum. This is how you have to, uh, what this, this uh, if you tell like this, it will impress the examiner. Okay. Yes, this is Doyen's mouth gag, which is a self retaining mouth gag used to open the mouth by anchoring on the teeth. Used for glossectomy, tongue tie release, dental surgery, caldwell lock operation, or excision of neranula, benign tumor system cavity. Just help in opening the mouth. Yes, this is the Boyle Davis mouth gag with the tongue blade. See, you can see a tongue blade now. This is the tongue blade. Such tongue blades are not present in case of Doyen's mouth gag. It is used for tonsillectomy, adenoidectomy, any excision of coanal polyps or surgeries of palate and nasopharynx. Okay, it has two components: Boyle's blade and the Davis gag. Both are used simultaneously. Okay, and it has a lock which will make it self-retaining. Okay. Yes, this is draft and bipods. Okay, which helps to fix the Boyle Davis mouth gag for numerous oropharyngeal surgery, including adenoidectomy or tonsillectomy. So draft and bipods. This is Boyle Davis mouth gag and the next is uh, Doyen's mouth gag. So these are the various instruments, okay, which are used. These are the three main instruments which is used in case of tonsillectomy or adenoidectomy. Very, very important. You should know. 
See, this is St. Clair Thompson's adenoid curate with the cage. Okay, you can see a cage. Cage means what a basket will be present at the end, which will help to pick up or which will what hold the what to say excised adenoid. Okay, cage will be present. This is called St. Clair Thompson adenoid curate with the cage. We have seen something no St. Clair Thompson mirror that is for yes, rhinoscopy. Yes. This is what valzel. This is valzel. Valzel, no. Always it will you will have some serrations like this at the end. Okay, and remember lock will be present. Okay, lock will be present. It helps to hold the tonsil to pull it medially prior to dissection. Yes, this is Eve's. Uh, what tonsillar snare? This is not, uh, this is nothing else but a wire. Pump, okay, this is a wire okay, which helps in crushing the tonsil, cutting and crushing the tonsil. This is called Eve tonsillar snare. This is a normal hemostatic artery forceps, okay, which will be curved or straight, okay. Artery forceps may be, it may be a normal artery forceps, mosquito artery forceps, straight artery forceps, curved artery forceps. Remember, all these forceps have a, what, lock. It has a ratchet for locking. Yes, this is Tilly's oral forceps, see, the long bit with a bent, yes. So, this is mainly for packing or unpacking the ear canal, for uh, packing and unpacking the nose, removal of the foreign body in the nose and ear. This is Tilly's oral forceps. Yes, very, very important. This is Lux forceps. See, you can see one, two, three, multiple bends are there. No? And remember, there is no lock. This is Lux forceps, mainly used for what? Caldwell Lux operation as well as in case of submucosal resection or septoplasty. Yes, this is the tongue depressor. The main funniest thing is you will just simply say tongue depressor. The examiner will ask you what is the name of the tongue depressor. It is LAC. It is LAC tongue depressor. Okay, LAC tongue depressor. Yes, this is a rigid bronchoscope. Okay, hollow rigid bron uh, uh, tube with a beveled end. What is the length of the adult bronchoscope? Very, very important. It is about 40 to 45 centimeter long and it has a vents on the side for ventilation of the other bronchus when they remain above the level of carina when, when we insert into the major bronchus and hence it differs from the esophagoscope. Esophagoscope does not have vents on the side for ventilation. So it is mainly used for diagnostic and therapeutic purpose. Therapeutic purpose, foreign body removal, tracheobronchial stending, aspiration of secretions and removal of tumors and for diagnostic purpose for biopsy. Okay, mainly for biopsy. Okay, we are using a rigid bronchoscope. See, this is esophagoscope. Remember, in esophagoscope, what? There is no vent. Okay, there is no vent. Again, it is 40 to 45 centimeter in length. It is again for diagnostic foreign body examination in case of tracheoesophageal fistula. Any structure, we will use for diagnostic purpose. Therapeutic removal of foreign body or esophageal stending or to introduce any sclerosing agents in case of treatment of esophageal varices. Okay, so do differentiate between um, what um, esophagoscope and bronchoscope. Yes, this is the tracheostracheal dilator to dilate the what tracheostoma during or after tracheostomy because we have to dilate the trachea now to insert the tracheostomy tube that is why okay and remember this looks almost like an artery forceps okay the curved artery forceps but what is the difference there is no ratchet for locking no lock this is Fuller's bival tracheostomy tube we are not using that Jackson's tracheostomy tube that also we are not using now what we are using is what Portex non-metallic cuffed tracheostomy tubes Okay, this is the head mirror, okay, mainly used by END, okay, the END uh, surgeons are the one people who always use the head mirror so that they will get a proper view of smaller structures which is present within the ear and it consists of a plastic head deck and the most important question, what is the type of mirror which is present in the head mirror, it is a concave mirror with a central hole, okay, yes. This is the commonly used BP handle, so called as the Bard Parker handle and in this here only we will fix the blades, okay, blades are available in various number 11, 22, etc. Okay, cutting as well as uh, for major incisions during surgery. So, this came to the end of um, the video discussion on um, the ENT instruments. Please make sure you are uh, know the instruments used in mastoid surgery, tonsillectomy or adenoidectomy, okay, the common artery forceps, the BP handle, the thudicum nasal speculum, indirect laryngoscopy mirror, St. Thompson's, okay, posterior uh, rhinoscopy mirror, all these are the very common instruments which will get, don't make any mistakes and of course you should know the portex cuffed, tracheostomy tube, tracheal dilator, okay, don't make mistakes in that, okay, just know the common instruments which are uh, done in case of common surgeries, thank you.